Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to give you our travel guide and recommendations for visiting Block Island, just off the southern coast of Rhode Island. In this video, we'll tell you everything you need to know, starting with a bit of background on the island's history, then details of how to get there, how best to explore the island, along with a few top sites to see, and hopefully we'll throw in a few fun facts along the way too. Okay, let's go getting there. Block Island is about nine miles off the southeast coast of Rhode Island. There is seasonal ferry service from a few other locations, but the only consistent way to get there with a decent ferry schedule is by using the Block Island Ferry Company. You can depart from either Newport or Port Judith. From Newport, they run only a high-speed ferry a few times a day, but from the primary port, Port Judith, they run both a high-speed ferry and a traditional ferry. You can check the Block Island Ferry website for more details, but for the purpose of this video, we'll talk about getting there from the primary port of Port Judith. From there, you can catch either the high-speed ferry, which has limited trips per day and costs about $50 and takes about 30 minutes, or you can take the traditional ferry, which takes about 55 minutes and costs $19 round trip. Parking is plentiful around the pier and costs about $15 a day on top of your ferry ticket. If you aren't pressed for time, we would recommend the slower scenic ferry from Port Judith, as it's quite a bit cheaper and a relatively scenic ride. Okay, babe, so where are we going today? Yes, so today we're taking a ferry and going to Block Island. All right, what are you gonna do on Block Island? So we rented a scooter and it's supposed to rain the majority of the day. So we'll see when we get over there if it's raining. Leaving from Port Judith, you also have a chance to explore a real fishing village around the port. No touristy gimmicks here, just the real deal. The ferry schedule changes by season, so check the BlockIslandFerry.com website for the latest schedules and fares. Now, just a quick bit on Block Island's history. The Narragansett Indians were the first inhabitants of Block Island, dating all the way back to more than a thousand years ago. The first European to call out the island was the famous Italian explorer Verrazzano in 1524. But it wasn't until 1614 that Adrian Block, a Dutch explorer, actually charted the island and named it after himself. How nice, huh? Finally, more years passed and it wasn't until 1661 that the island was actually first settled by a group of English. It slowly grew over the years, first primarily as a fishing village, and then as a tourist destination towards the end of the 1800s. Fun fact, Block Island was once marketed as the Bermuda of the North. Today, Block Island remains a popular tourist destination and is known for its bicycling, hiking, sailing, and fishing while still maintaining a small town charm. No McDonald's or Starbucks here. In fact, over 40% of the island has been set aside for conservation and much of the northern part is a wildlife preserve. Lastly, beyond this awesome video, I just want to call out a couple of resources you should check out to prepare for your Block Island visit. One is blockislandinfo.com and the other is the Block Island Historical Society, which has both a website and a small museum in town. Together, these two sites have a ton of information to prepare you for your visit. Now, let's get to the good stuff. What to see and how to see it. The ferry will arrive in the only town on the island, New Shoreham. Beyond this small village, the primary activity is to get out and explore all the island has to offer along its back roads. There are two or three recommended tourist routes as shown here. If you want to rent a bike, we recommend doing just the South Island Loop. If you want to rent a scooter or a vehicle, you can do both that loop as well as the North Island outing. We would recommend renting a scooter if the weather's nice, and that was our plan. But not everything goes as planned. All right, we plan to rent a scooter at Aldo's and we pre-booked, but it's a little dark and a little wet so we got to change the plans here 
We're going to take a Ford Bronco Sport. That we're waiting for. We're waiting for now. Drive around the island because the Scottsdale Travel Chick didn't want to get her hair wet. <laughs> yes, that is true. Leo did. So we didn't get our scooter, but we did get this Ford Bronco for the same price. So Leo's here hooked us up because it was raining. I guess there's a old Leo and a younger little Leo and little Leo hooked us up and we're gonna take this Ford Bronco yep. and we're gonna do our scooter tour with the Ford Bronco. Yep. You ready? I'm ready. In this section, we'll touch on the primary sights to see across the island. Save your time exploring the harbor town until you return at the end of the day and get going by taking the south end loop going clockwise. The first thing you'll come to will be the Spring House Hotel. Established in 1852, it's the island's oldest and largest hotel and has hosted notable guests such as Ulysses S. Grant, Mark Twain, and Billy Joel. Make a quick stop to explore the grounds and depending on the weather, grab a drink and relax on the Adirondack chairs out on the lawn. We're at the Spring House Hotel, which there's a lot of history here from the 1800s onward. Next up is the Southeast Lighthouse. It's a National Historic Landmark built in 1873. Fun fact, in 1993, it was moved to where you see it is today, back from the brink of collapse over the nearby cliff, which continued to erode over the decades. The original location of the lighthouse is still noted by a large boulder today. Free admission to the gift shop and a $10 admission to the small museum and to climb to the top of the tower. From here, you can also see Another Block Island attraction, which are the windmills out in the ocean. You can actually take a separate tour just to visit these windmills and learn more about them. Just next door to the lighthouse are the Mohegan Bluffs, 150 foot tall ocean cliffs on the east coast. On a clear day, you can see all the way to Montauk Point on Long Island. There are stairs here you can use to climb down to the beach and explore, or just relax a bit. Maybe get a little wet. All right, babe. We got our badass Bronco. So far, so good. And where are we at now? This is called the Mohegan Bluffs. And yeah. we are going to walk through here. And there's a long set of stairs all the way down. Down to so where? Down to the ocean. Oh. All right. You bring your bathing suit? No, we're just gonna go. Come on. No bathing suit? Well, I need some pictures of you in your bathing suit. No, come on. Let's go. Down a little bit to get to the water. But looks like a nice beach along these cliffs. all the rocks when the water goes out. Pretty cool, huh? Moving along the southern end of the island, you'll next come to Fresh Pond and Rodman's Hollow. Fresh Pond is the location of the original European settlement on the island. There are a couple of plaques giving you some history, and there are a number of great but short hiking trails between Fresh Pond and Rodman's Hollow. If you have the time, definitely check one out. Original freshwater lake. We're very early settlers or Indians lived around here in caves along that lake. Now just some beautiful countryside. There's a little trail right there you can hike down through. As you make the turn and come up the east coast, you'll have four beach options to consider. Kunimus Beach, Dory's Cove, Grace's Cove, and Charleston Beach. We stopped at Dory's Cove, but the choice is up to you. Okay, we're at Dory's Beach, which is hiding behind these big bushes. It's right here. And we're at Dory's Beach. 
If you look at there, you can see there's a sea lion playing right out in front of him. See him? Finally, as you finish off the South End Loop, you'll come to the Island Cemetery in New Harbor area. The cemetery has gravestones all the way back to the original inhabitants in the early 1600s. You'll see quite a few names repeated over and over again as many generations of offspring stayed close to home. Another bonus is the cemetery also has some of the best views in the island, looking out over New Harbor and the Great Salt Pond. Just down the road is New Harbor itself. This harbor is actually an artificial harbor and was created when they dug a channel from the ocean into the Great Salt Pond in 1895. There's not much to do here, but there are two or three dining options. It's probably a good place to consider a stop for a bite to eat, some taffy or some ice cream before you make the turn to do the North Point route along Corn Neck Road. You'll finish off the South End Loop at the largest stretch of beach on the island. There are a number of names along the road, but it's basically one long beach, Block Island State Beach. If the weather's nice, maybe take some time to relax and walk along this very popular beach. As you continue the drive north along Corn Neck Road, you'll pass a couple of places to take some short hikes out to more secluded beaches. We like this one. You can also stop at what they call the Secret Labyrinth, which sounds pretty cool, but it's just a bunch of rocks in a circle in a small sitting area for reflection and meditation. Probably skip it unless you have some extra time. The real goal of this North Point Drive is at the very end, where you can park and view Settlers Rock, explore the wildlife reserve, and hike out to North Lighthouse. As you park at the end of the road, you will immediately see a granite boulder called Settler's Rock. This rock lists the name of the original English settlers. It was at this location that the settlers landed and swam ashore, bringing with them the island's first cows. You'll be able to experience the Block Island Natural Wildlife Refuge here as well. Established in 1973, the refuge is home to over 250 species of birds. We didn't see a ton of species when we were there, but we did see a bunch of these dive bomber ones. I was videotaping this, but they got all these crazy birds flying out. Whoa, one went right, right by me. I don't know what they're doing right here. Eating bugs, little swallows. And this is the salt flats. From the parking lot, you can walk about three quarters of a mile, primarily along the beach, to North Lighthouse at the north tip of the island. It's a beautiful lighthouse in a very scenic location, and definitely worth the hike. Here's some aerial drone footage along the path you take to walk to the lighthouse in the dunes at North Point. Fun fact, the current lighthouse, built in 1867, is actually the fourth lighthouse on this site 
as the prior three were slowly consumed by storms in the sea over the years. Walk around and check things out, but perhaps the most exciting part about this hike is the nesting birds nearby. You can hike the sandy dunes as part of the wildlife refuge, and there are tons of nesting birds to see. There's nests up in there. Finally, once you've had your fill of North Coast, drive back to the Old Harbor area, return your vehicle, and explore the few side streets around the pier. Maybe grab a bite to eat. There are a few fancier options overlooking the harbor. Take your pick. Or if you want something more casual, local style, maybe try Aldo's one block behind the Harbor Street. Then when you're done, grab a ferry back to the mainland and call it a day. Well, there you have it our guide to exploring Block Island. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give us a comment and give us a thumbs up. It really helps. Until next time, see you later.